Hello, friends. Welcome to Gurukul and welcome to Andy Talk Show. Today, we have an exceptional guest. Uh, she's Dr. Erica, Dr. Erica Harris. Uh, she's gone through so much of pain and trauma. Uh, we'll be talking more about that today. And uh, uh, we'll be also talking about her new upcoming book and as well as how a person through, through sheer will, share hard work and through sheer will to survive, how they come out of one of the most, most, most dreaded disease. And that's what we're talking about is leukemia. Okay. So without further ado, let me hand it over to Dr. Erica. Erica, please close yours. Hello, Andy. I'm so happy to be here with you today. Yes, I've navigated seemingly relentless, insurmountable feats for years on end. And having been once the poster child for health and wellness, gosh, cancer was certainly not on my agenda ever, most especially at the age of 35, while still nursing my youngest. I had hiked every mountain and I had soared down them all on my skis. I was incredibly happily married. We had two beautiful boys. Um, and, you know, we lived in this huge family cul-de-sac. Um, our house was filled with family, friends, great food and great music. I was even a sports chiropractor, inspiring my own community to attain its healthiest health status and practiced what I preached by every measure. I did not see cancer coming. I had never really slowed down enough to mm. really appreciate that we were truly living, quote unquote, the dream, mm. right? And I was always so go, go, go that, you know, in retrospect, we were living that dream, but I never really took the time to fully, fully appreciate that yeah. gift at that time. Oh. And um, yeah, I remember hearing those dire words you yeah. have cancer. And yeah. this all came as such a shock. To be yeah, honest, I was bad. standing in the middle. Yeah, yeah, I was standing in the middle of the Vancouver Aquarium. Um, oh. I was out on a date with my two tiny boys and oh. um, they were so eager to see all of their aquarium friends. And we had packed for a picnic to follow. Gosh, we were even planning on going away the next week for a month long holiday to the beach. Um, we were preparing my oldest to start kindergarten soon. We had so many plans on the go. And I had done a very routine lab test just before going to the aquarium that day. Wow. And um, as I had arrived in the aquarium, I've got, I'm literally still tucking my, um, my pass back into my wallet when my phone started ringing and I almost didn't answer it because I've got these two little legs racing ahead that are so excited. Right. And, um, I just kind of caught it on the last ring and the voice on the other end of the line had such panic and urgency to oh. it. And, you know, saying right away, is this Erica Harris? Is this Erica Harris? Well, this is the lab and you need to go right away to the nearest emergency and avoid all public places. And I was so dumbfounded yeah. that, that I just kept saying, no, 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 like, I'm fine. I'm in the most yeah, public exactly. of public places right now. You have the wrong girl. Like, I am the poster child for health and wellness. I am not sick. I promise, right? Yeah. Like, I was so dumbfounded. I hadn't even complained of feeling yeah. sick or unwell. And little did I know then all of the trials and tribulations right. that would come to follow in the next few years facing this big fire breathing dragon of cancer wow wow and and you know uh, basically i can just imagine you just get this in the movies that the phone rings and then wow you gotta cancel but you know actually going through it we were i tell you it's traumatic it's traumatic to the core and i can feel the the the, the way she's talking in a voice that amount of trauma that goes through just when you hear this right and then you start then it's always down the hill i mean Erica, you the would world, like to something. Yeah, go ahead. The Sherry. world that I knew, the healthy, fit um, girl that hiked every mountain, right? Yes. Um, yeah. The world that I knew, this happy marriage, everything, the world that I knew was ripped away from under me yeah. within seconds, within the blink of an eye, never yeah. to return again. They gave you how much time? The doctor said, well, I mean, it was a, it was a process. So yeah. So I, I hear these dire words that I've got leukemia a, and yeah. a very aggressive yeah. version of leukemia. And mm -hmm. despite my most valiant of valiant efforts being admitted as a full-time patient in hospital, 
um, and receiving around the clock, 24 um, seven chemotherapy regimens. Right. Um, I did not even respond to the harshest of chemotherapy regimens known as salvage chemotherapy. And um, I assure you that is brutal. And that treatment just needs, yeah. needs to be renamed, right? Um, Cause it inherently denotes, hmm, well, what if this doesn't work, right? Yeah, and, sure. um, and unfortunately I didn't respond even to this salvage chemotherapy. And less than two months after standing at that aquarium, not even knowing that I was sick, less right. than two months later, I hear the words of this dire two month terminal cancer prognosis because I oh didn't God. respond to even the harshest of chemotherapy regimens available. Not yeah. only that, but I was denied all further medical treatment aside from palliative care moving forward. And not only that, this dire prognosis was even reconfirmed by a leading leukemia institute. I'm here in Vancouver, Canada, but this wow. was reconfirmed by a leading leukemia institute in Seattle and wow. where, where I went with all my eggs in one basket, just trying to get another sign of hope, right? <laughs> Something else to stay the course. Sure. Um, but yeah, this was, I, I was literally sent home. I fought to go home. If I had two months to live, if I had 60 days to live, Andy, I had so much living to do right in that time. And so I fought to go home. I did not want to go to that palliative floor. I fought to go home. And um, I just wanted to be by my young family every yeah. step of every step of the way. And at home, I prepared for the worst. I definitely accepted the grandiose, nature of the power that right. this big fire breathing dragon of cancer brought to me. And I made all of those heartfelt recordings um, for my children and the memory albums, photo albums. I made so much for them in this time because right. I knew that they were so young and they would yeah. never come to remember how much yeah, I loved yeah. every tiny thing about them, right? right. And so, right. and also going through this process all, all that negative and, and emotion and all that hurt and all that, all that, um, all those tears that, that were streaming down my face for all yeah. of those moments that I would come to miss yeah. also fueled me mm. on my path forward as I always expected the yeah. best. Mm -hmm. And with that, I fought my fight of fights and I pursued any and everything in the natural healthcare realm, right. um, green juicing, meditation, I did vitamin injections, vitamin C right. injections. Um, right. I did some supplements, you know, um, energy work. I did any and everything in the natural healthcare realm. And to be honest, it was also this deep inward transformation mm -hmm. of my thoughts and how I process the world and how I chose to see each and every day. Wow. I really experienced so many awakenings in this time, profound awakenings. And this was all such a wake up call um, mm -hmm. that I was finally able to hear, right? I had finally found the calm in my heart to hear all of these lessons that had come with adversity. Right. And, and gosh, I truly transformed in this time. And miraculously, I had attained this glorious, unexpected, complete spontaneous remission from wow. leukemia. But only then um, was I able to serve as a recipient for a life-saving bone marrow transplant. Bone marrow. Right, serves right. as a quote unquote cure to yeah. prevent against aggressive relapse from such an aggressive cancer. Ooh. Because if there were even one more blood cell, leukemic yeah. cell, just comes back yeah. floating yeah. around it would come back so fast right yeah. yeah and in efforts of leaving no stone unturned i definitely wanted to pursue this bone marrow transplant True. but the really cool part about my story andy is that um take it back a little bit so after Please, i yes. did not respond to this yeah when i didn't respond to the first round of chemotherapy mm -hmm. the team realized shoot like this is such an aggressive leukemia erica you're gonna need salvage chemotherapy followed by a bone marrow transplant Wow. And um, gosh, I, at first I was just like, this sounds terrible. Like, show me, show me somebody who has thrived yeah. through this on the other side of this treatment that you're proposing, right? Yeah. Yeah. And they had brought in this beautiful woman. It's very rare, but they found one woman who had been uh, 45 at the time. She okay. came in, she said every word I needed to hear. She was so inspirational wow. and um, she was just such a light. Her name was Mary and yeah. um, Mary left. And at the end of that visit, she uh, was saying, Erica, like, 
I just need to go. I'm, I'm, I'm getting off. I'm going to meet my, my first new grandbaby, right? Cause she was now oh, six. Her grandbaby. The whole grandbaby. Yes. Wow. Yes. And so okay. for me, that was such a, such an inspiration just to stay the course, right? Yeah. Because I could yeah. see myself and I always picture myself pushing my little grandbaby, my future grandbabies, yeah. no pressure yeah. to my kids, but pushing my future grandbabies down the Ambleside seawall here in West Vancouver. Power of visualization. Right? So, Power yeah. Of so I was told. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was told back then that I would need a bone marrow transplant donor. And okay. so my only brother, um, who's a surgeon back East in Ontario proved not to be a match. And, um, and so this worldwide search had been hailed okay. on my behalf okay. to find this much needed, perfect bone marrow transplant donor. Okay. And, um, the just perfect the one, donors. Are just the one perfect donor, not your brother would have wouldn't match my brother was the, not a match uh, yeah and was, so the, there was this worldwide wow. search hailed on my behalf to find this donor there's an international stem cell registry or bone yeah. marrow registry yes yes mm -hmm. um and it's it's amazing how the world can come together through this amazing program yeah. anyhow um it takes weeks and weeks and weeks to find a perfect donor right mm -hmm. and they have to test a lot of samples anyhow literally at the end of july 2012 my team came racing into my hospital room saying, mm. oh my gosh, we found you this perfect 10 out of 10 donor. And okay. Andy, this was just the best day, like truly wow. the best day. Um, okay. I just yeah. knew, I knew with this news that I would not only survive, but that I would truly, truly thrive all mm. because of this kindness of this complete One stranger, mm. right? Mm. This gift that I had just been given of hope, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, Okay, and so this was just such a great day, but then less you. than the, less you. than twenty four less than yeah. twenty four hours later mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was the day I had heard the words, "You didn't respond. We didn't know you didn't respond to salvage chemotherapy. You oh. are not in remission, and you are not eligible for this transplant." Oh. Wow! And so, oh my gosh, this gift of life that was just extended was so yeah. brutally ripped away just the yeah. very very next day. But yeah. Andy, uh -huh. knowing that knowing that this donor existed right. gave me such hope oh. to hold on to. I don't yeah. even know in this time that I said I was transforming myself. Yeah. I think I was really trying to extend those 60 days, even by one extra day, two extra mm -hmm. days, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. In hopes, mm -hmm. in hopes that someone somewhere around the world would yeah. give me this transplant, yes. even if I wasn't yeah. in remission. Right, right. And um, there were studies going on in different places all over the world. But this complete stranger gave yeah. me such hope to hold on and to stay the course. And I kid you not, I've now come to meet him through years later. Of all the hope that he has blessed me with, believe yeah. it or not, he is this young, amazing, adventurous I see. mountain guy in mountain guy, Germany. Exactly. Okay. Germany, right? right? And yeah, yeah. his last name huh? is spelled H-O-P-P-E. -P -P -E. And I know it's pronounced very differently in Germany, but to me, it means hope for all oh. the hope that he brought me. And I just think this wow. is the coolest story of how cool. we can it's all cool. contribute to world kindness, right? And giving life and sharing the gift of life. So I was very blessed with this amazing donor who was already signed up on the registry Right. And he raced out to get those testings done as soon as he did. Because mm -hmm. had I not known that on July yeah. 31st, right. on July 30th, when yeah. I had those terrible words on July 31st, I never would have known yes. because I was taken off. I was no longer eligible to receive this transplant. True, true. And so I never would have known. But just by one day, the power of one day, right? Yeah. It was nice. so life-saving for me. It's literally yeah. why I'm here today through those who so selflessly and so kindly give of themselves to save others yeah, through yeah, their donations. That's amazing. And look at him, right? Look at him, right? Hope, right? Look at him, hope. I mean, even his his name itself sounds like, okay, that gave a hope to you. You know that, okay, hang on, Erica. You're not going anywhere. You have a strong willpower. Is it like the forces around the nature is telling you, hang on, Erica. Help yes, you away. it was Help that. You and away. I knew it was exactly that, Andy. I just knew that I had been given this information for mm. some reason to stay mm. the course and to hold on, right? And I think a big part of healing 
is to allow yourself this space to be open about all of those experiences. I can share a lot of these moments that were so powerful yeah. on, on my path that were just these little signs. Okay, Erica, Erica Jane got this, just hold on, you know, just hold on, stay yeah. the course for another day, right? And it, these these moments, if you're just open to them, are so so powerful. True, true, I really true. And viewers, I'll tell you, viewers, let me kind of talk talk to them. Look, you know, there would be shares saying that okay, you know, we are, they know how to cure a pain, they know how to cure it. But somebody who has actually gone through it, and then they come out of it, and then when they say that okay, I've gone through the pain, let me help you to come to to manage yourself. Even though they are doctor, they're not doctor, but somebody who's really gone through the pain, they understand the nuances about how to tackle it, right? So I'm, I'm very proud of those people who, who, go, who are willing to go out and help the needy. And Erica is one of them. You know, she's surely one of them uh, because you, it's very difficult to really fight the battle with the leukemia in you, when you know you have only 60 days to live. You are thinking something else, but then having a power of visualization, having, I mean, invoking the law of attraction, all these things, I'm sure she must have done it in some way or the other form. And then certainly giving herself a hope to find a bone marrow and voila, you know, uh, I think the things change around, around that point. So really speaking, the willpower, Erica, that you carried, the, the way you, the way you, you know, uh, consistently had this understanding that, you know, I need to find this, I need to do this for my kids. I need to do this for my family. I need to do this for my people who I I I, I live, live with, you know. So how 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 did they take this kind of initial initial news when you when you came to know about it? You know, can you can you share this traumatic situations? How how your family supported? Hmm? Yeah, I've been incredibly lucky. I have been literally supported with worldwide forces of love and support on this journey. Yeah, yeah. And whether like my family has been incredibly supportive the whole time, friends, family, even complete strangers from all corners of our great world were yeah. hailing us with support and prayers and love. And yeah, I think that was a big part of my healing as well. Just this incredible force of love that I was blessed with. But in saying that, Andy, you can still feel so alone on this journey. I even had 60 visitors per day in my hospital room, but I still felt so alone unless connecting with those who truly understood the True. hardship of the journey. And so that is why I do what I do now in my professional pursuits. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this was, this was um, a lot, right? On a young family because... Um, in Canada, we're so lucky with our amazing healthcare system. We are so incredibly lucky. And so there are so many resources. All yeah. the attention goes to that patient. It's yeah. all on me, right? Yeah. But very little resources, actually none, are available for the families of young sick parents. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and there are, are so many places that those young sick parents really, really need that help. Let's just say... Yeah. Um, gosh, you take a young mom out of the house. That's so much to fill. You need like six people just to do that one job, right? Because ooh, like, ooh. she just knows, she knows what she's doing. She knows the pattern. She knows the flow, yeah. but yeah. Um, um, so just, just alone, like manpower at home, but also like resources for my kids. Cause they were so small and you take a young mom out of the house and to help them grieve with that loss and True. understand True. this. I needed some services in place for that, some art therapy. I needed so much support for them. When True. my children were loved on this journey, I'm very lucky by the school they've ended up attending, but right. when they were loved on this journey by family, by friends, by their school, by any of these resources, that's right. when I could fight. And that's right. when I could focus on me, if that True. made sense. Sure, only yeah. when they were loved and I had those things in place. My, yeah. my husband could have really used way more support on this journey, right? Yeah. Even another young dad to bounce things off. Good day, hard day. Um, we were thrown through the ringer with the rise and fall that our family went through of right. all these like amazing news. I'm in remission. I have this two month remission. Then I have this bone marrow transplant and I'm on my climb back to health. But right. then I ended up with rejection from the bone marrow transplant and my new immune system, my hearty immune system, where my blood yeah. type even yeah. changed from O negative to A positive, decided yeah. to wake up and attack my own lungs. 
And then I fell to 80 pounds. I was on full-time oxygen, requiring a double lung transplant. Let's talk more about that. Let's, let, let's talk more. Let's, let, let's elaborate. You're going a little bit faster. Let my viewers catch up with you, okay? So I'll, I'll re reset this. Yes, your family. I know, you know, Erica, you're so lucky and blessed to have your family, your, your friends, uh, people around you in the society, uh, picking up kids from the school. You know, those are, those are the most important things this mother kind of takes up the job yes. of taking care of the kids, right? And somebody helps. And even like, this time of even sideline, even sideline soccer cheerleading, right? Things uh, nobody would think of, but I wanted somebody to be there to cheer on my baby. Yes. To give, and I wanted to keep my kids in these arenas of little soccer games and other things mm. to keep their focus yes. on some fun activities, right? Mm. And mm. it's part of, success is part of like, adaptability is part of success, right? And so, yes. Yeah, yeah. Go, yeah. So we kept, I, I love like, that. Yeah. I love that, you know, when, like when I know my kid, uh, both the kids, uh, they perform their violin in the school and they, they look forward to have their parents yes. out there. And, you know, because there's a the proud moment to display their talent on what they learn in the school, right? So technically speaking, yes, the, the soccer games, the, the violins, uh, uh, the, the, the music class and everything, that's so very important for the development, development of the kids. And mom needs to be there because they are the important people in the in that. And so, you know. And if mom is stuck in the hospital, then you would want somebody at that, recital or at that concert right cheering on your children when they finished like and just being in that crowd to support them so these are all the systems that really need to be in place for these young families and that aren't currently in place so absolutely true you know so uh, i think uh, you passed that you got a bone marrow that was the best part of uh, of the of the initial uh, healing process of the chemotherapy right and then what happened to your to that bone marrow i mean Hope gave you a bone marrow, then what happened? Like you started recovering. Let's let's talk more yeah. elaborately on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. So yes, um, I for the most part, um, I had acute rejection in my tummy. So I was I, I really struggled for the first bit. Um that? and that what just that? Means, well, what, Yeah, what so that's that? a good what? question. Yeah. Yeah. So um with this new strong immune system and this new strong bone marrow, it kind of you know, it's, it's, it's a new foreign substance in your body. Right. right. And so right. as it's producing these new blood cells, right. Mm -hmm. It kind of goes around and it looks around and it says, shoot, I don't recognize this, this tummy. I don't recognize these lungs. And it started in my tummy with this acute rejection where wow. my new immune system kind of looked at my tummy and said, shoot, this looks like an invader, right? Yeah. Like a cold or a flu or a bug. And I'm going to wow. attack this tummy. If that makes sense. Yes, and yes. Um, it did a, yeah, it did a very thorough job. So I was readmitted really early on. Um, mm -hmm. I was denied all food, all water. I couldn't have any medication. Everything had to come through an IV. I okay. would have like, you know, my fats would come in for the day. They'd be in this like nasty white bag and it would go straight in through my arm or I'm wherever sure. my oh. port was. But sure. um, yeah, and so I was denied food, water, everything um, for weeks on end because my tummy was um, in such distress. Yeah. Um, I had a few rounds of um, septic uh, pneumonia um, oh. because my immune system was so weak at the time as it was just mm. growing. Mm -hmm. But all in all, I grew strong and yeah. um, I was back to hiking every mountain and I was back to soaring down them on, on my skis. But right. this was a really um, this was a really grueling process. And I understood the world and recovery in a totally different way. I had almost taken my health for granted right? For so right. long before that. And I remember very distinctly as I was out for my walks in mm. this time after my bone marrow transplant mm. and, um, and, and I would see a curb coming up. Like if I was crossing right. the street and I had right. to lift myself up to go over this curb, oh wow. my gosh, the ink and the dread that would come up just to lift my leg up enough to halt myself over this curb. Wow. Right. It was, I really had to do that climb back and it was really, really hard, but I did, I grew strong I see. and um, it was such a gift, but this, this burst of health in this um, and my return to myself, again, this rise and fall, this burst of health was so short lived. And as I was back on my hikes, mm. all of a sudden, I just couldn't get in enough air and oh. um, I couldn't talk. I like to talk as you can tell. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, um, 
I couldn't, no. I couldn't talk in the same capacity that I could always talk on the hikes that I had done before. And people, people were passing me and they were like, oh, thanks for letting me pass. And I was like, girl, I'm not letting you pass yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on these hikes. I just couldn't yeah. get in enough air. And so I remember saying this to my physicians that like, I cannot get in enough air. I don't know what it is. True. And they just assumed that I was doing so much exercise more than anyone else after bone marrow transplant, right? And True. that maybe I just needed to like hone the reins back a bit. And so right. I was so happy, Andy. Um, I didn't yeah. care if I couldn't hike those mountains anymore. I was just so excited to be alive today. I was happy to walk the True. flat seawall. And so then I changed my walks to the seawall. But really in no time at all, even on the flat seawall walks, oh. I noticed that I couldn't get in enough air and I couldn't have these conversations even on those flat walks. And so then they soon realized that, um, again, I was experiencing this rejection where my right. new hearty immune system had kind of woken up, looked around and said, shoot, I do not recognize her lungs right. and embarked on attack mode, just like oh. it would a cold or a flu. So and, what happened oh my to God, the stomach? What happened to the it's stomach? A, Started happening to the lungs. Well, the stomach recovered. Yep, the yeah. stomach recovered from that acute rejection. Right. Um, and then when this, when the lung rejection had started, I assumed that that would recover as well with That's higher right. dose immune suppression. Right. True. True. Um, but unfortunately, I did not respond, and this rejection just took over. It's called a process of bronchiolitis obliterans, okay. and literally, Andy, it totally obliterates your lungs. Wow. And um. I, yes, I had fallen to 80 pounds on full-time oxygen. Staying the course every day was brutally hard. I had just recovered, had this miraculous remission, right? right. From, right. from this cancer. And yeah. now I'm getting worse every single day. I've right. lost the vision in my eyes from steroid related cataracts. I can't see, I can't wow. drive. I wow. can't even walk across my kitchen without feeling like I was going to lose control of all bodily function. Wow. And I was told my only chance of survival would be to receive the gift of new lungs. But how trying that was for me, because for something great to happen to me, something mm -hmm. terrible had to happen to somebody else. And that was so much to grapple with. Right. And staying the course every day in this time, Right. was brutally hard. I was, my brain was not getting enough oxygen. I did not feel like my passionate self. Right. I um, yeah. didn't have that, that vim and vigor that I always had. And to be honest, I was like, shoot, if they fix my lungs, like, am I going to come back to me? Back to, yeah. And this was all such a brutally, brutally hard time. Wow. And with amazing thanks to the mm. kindness of a family who bestowed their most generous of generous gifts at their hardest of hardest hardest of times was I blessed with the gift of new lungs and Andy I always say uh, that we never know what tomorrow will bring right and on July 31st 2012 mm -hmm. as I shared I heard the words of my two-month terminal prognosis fast yeah. forward three years and on July 31st 2015 uh -huh. was the day I heard new lungs were waiting wow. and so that then that worst day then became my best day. The best right? day. Yes. Right. Yes. And um, and then I was gifted with this gift of new lungs. Yes. Wow. Amazing story. So in the three years, the two months have been just kind of, you know, is is like a footnote in your story of yes, summer, the footnote. Like, three years, you know. Uh those yeah. but those turbulent time was just a starting point where you just kept on kept on surviving, surviving. And it's amazing. Uh, like First, the, the 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 stomach rejection, then you're 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 not able to <laughs> even pass the curb, and then your lungs start uh, failing. You know, it's this amazing journey through through this. I mean, you know, I'm speechless. Okay, we was I'm speechless. Well, this has been. I think yeah. I, I think all those tools that I learned in those in that footnote, as you call it, of those two months, all the tools and all those awakenings that I had really helped me stay the course and yeah. really helped me still to find joy no matter what I was going through in the gift of today because today is such a gift right and there are so many people that have been taken too soon and yeah. I even know this from my own journey who 
other young moms or other people who haven't been as blessed as I am to get to sit here today, right? And mm. so no matter what I was going through, finding the joy for each and every day was so, so, so important because I still had that gift of getting to be mom to my children, right? Yeah. Yeah. And whereas so many people would, would do anything to come back for one day, one hour or one minute even, right? Yeah. And just hug their loved ones. True. And so my perspective on each and every day was just, it's just such a gift to get to be alive today. And I just wish that others could um, appreciate yeah. it more without enduring all of the hardships that I had to go through. But okay. the rise and fall, right, still continued on even yeah. after that. So I grew strong after my lungs and I was right. back to living. But um, with the gift of new lungs had come this this tell virus about, that I hadn't been exposed to. Right, right. So tell me more about the lung transplant, you know, and our viewers as well. So the, sure. how how we how we got into that, you know, I think uh, was there another Mary over there or please go ahead. Hmm? Um, yep. So I had the call on July 31st that lungs were yeah. waiting for me and my transplant happened on August 1st. I was readmitted. Um, everything was very smooth with that big transplant. So I now have a scar that goes from kind of, it's almost like a, it's almost like the underwire of a bra line is okay. where my scar goes from one okay. armpit all the way over to the other. Yeah, yeah, my okay. chest would have yeah. been open much like a clamshell, if you yeah. can picture that. Um, <laughs> and gosh, coming out of that recovery, I felt like I had been hit by Tonka trucks just over wow. and over and over again in that ICU. Yeah. Um, um, I, and it was really hard because I had, I had almost pictured my myself after this lung transplant mm -hmm. being able to breathe and I couldn't wait to take that first breath right true, true. but I had had this breathing tube in at the time and I kept saying take it out take it out like I can't wait right, right. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. um I had been handcuffed to the to the to the hospital bed rails because instinctively I guess when I was sleeping I would be trying to pull out this this tube so I was even handcuffed and gosh this was a really hard time in that ICU but um, I, I was begging for days on end to be, for this to come out. And then when it finally came out, Andy, yeah. I remember feeling so plummeted again because I, I couldn't breathe. And, um, I was like, oh my gosh, it didn't work. It didn't work. And, um, but I had had to develop so many survival mechanisms to yeah. breathe. And, and I yeah. changed the way I was breathing before okay. just to stay alive that I completely forgot how, how to breathe normally. Wow. And this is such a gift that we all just, we all so readily take for granted this gift Planet, of yeah. breath, right? Yes. Yes. And oh my heavens, what a panic it was. But I had to relearn how to breathe. True. And it seems like the simplest thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I really, really had to relearn how to breathe. And through that climb back, um, I, I did, I grew strong. I was very lucky. Nice. Nice, nice. Absolutely. You know, you, the most common thing that we do, like eat, sleep, breathe, even sleeping as well, you know, you need to, you need to sleep in such a way that your brain rejuvenates. And the next day you come out, you come out to be a stronger and a fresh person, right? So is the breathing. You do the right breathing. Your, your, your body is always in a relaxed form, less inflammation, less stress in your body and in and the, the amount of energy in your body is kind of always carry, carries you to the next level right so uh simple things in life we take it granted i'll, I'll add one more thing okay erica uh, and i'll take your permission for that you know even love love is something that we just take for granted love of our loved ones next to us next to each uh, each other of friend love of a friend as well we take it for granted and then when you lose it we really know the value of it. Why do hell wait till that time? You know, just just get appreciated when it is there, right? So and then and then use it to your your proper benefit. Uh, for to be honest, it's, yeah, go ahead. You're right. Go ahead. That's beautiful. That's yeah. beautiful. But to be honest, even even the simplest of daily routines, right? So when yeah. I heard those words that mm. I had this dire two month prognosis, or no, even that I had even ha that I had leukemia when I was still sitting in the doctor's office. Right. Hearing the words, I have leukemia. I saw her try to conceal my physician. Yeah. I was, saw her try to conceal a tear in her eye. True. And um, at that point, I looked out the window and I kind of, 
like I could kind of hear everything in the conversation, but it was almost like slow motion, True. right? I could hear it, but I couldn't hear it. It was all kind of distorted after this, after right. this, after hearing I had leukemia and after seeing her tear, it all became like this slow motion distorted video where True. my husband holding my hand beside me yeah. was asking this, this huge onslaught of questions as yeah. any caring husband would, right? True. And so True. I kind of tuned out and I drifted out and I turned my my vision towards the window yes, and it was the downtown that. the downtown core of vancouver below and my uh, eyesight caught this this woman walking home from work and she was this energetic woman her hair was literally like bopping with every step she took she was walking right. along the sidewalk she said hello yeah. friendly with this huge smile to everyone she passed yes. and um it looked as though she had been walking home from work she had professional attire on and then she had sneakers yeah. and she was wearing this little backpack right. and this woman I, I was just captured by her I could kind of picture that she was probably at work for the day Somebody in from, downtown yes. she was walking yes. back home to mm. go prepare a meal for her family yeah. maybe right? right and in that moment I watched her and with all that vim and vigor that I had watched that same journey many times before with that same vim and vigor mm. I wanted to be her yeah. again instantly at that time right i wanted to be her i wanted to be her going home making a family meal for my kids for my right. family right. right without a care in the world true and true. so true. even the simplest routine acts mm. that we all take for granted right have such power that you wow. just yeah and then in, in the end it's those moments yes. right that are standing out with such shining light, those simplest yeah. of moments of making one family meal, right? Yes. And how you, we all get to do that tonight if we're then here today I, and what a gift it is. True, true, absolutely true. And in that, that simple moments, that's the moments that define a person. It defines your life, you know, how you are and how you are going to manage yourself in this, in this world of stress, uh, especially in times of Corona. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a different different ball game altogether. You have to hold yourself up too, too much, you know? So coming back to you again, Erica, okay? So thinking from, from that, okay, you recovered the lungs, you started to understand how you breathe now. Uh, you uh, Did you start hiking again? I mean, I know hiking is a passion. Okay, I let me take the viewers back again, pre-leukemia uh, pre, uh, uh, days, right? When she was in a, in a sports uh, uh, chiropractor, uh, let's let's give some tell our viewers about your life before leukemia. Okay, what were you? How you were doing? You know what what was your aspirations in life? Uh, let, let's let's talk about that. Let's make our discussion a little bit lighter. Okay, and then we can come back to what happened after the the lung transplant. Okay, please go ahead, Erica. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I talked about this in the beginning, but happy to do so again. Um, uh -huh. Really, just the poster child for health and wellness. Um, really strong i loved being out in nature mm. always um it just it just rooted me somehow oh. and um so always hiking mountains and soaring down the mall on my skis yes um you, were a community um, leader. you, were, you talk about your community leadership where you uh you know help people in within your community to yeah, to I used help. to yeah. I, I, I used to speak at my old alma mater of ubc uh -huh. um as to how to inspire others to live their healthiest lives. Right. Um, I spoke all over the community as to what people could do, <clears throat> you mm -hmm. know, easy practices to implement to live their most healthy lives and, mm -hmm. and um, healthy, fit, pain-free lives. Um, yeah. As a sports chiropractor, I had a thriving business, mm -hmm. um, booming practice where I would help people move more efficiently in their chosen sport or in their activities or even at their workstations, right? right? And um, I loved that. It's such a passion for my job and what I did and um, mm -hmm. really loved, really loved that community. But this was, this was also what was so brutally hard, right? When I had heard those words of cancer, because at the age of 35, like this was yeah. not on my agenda. And I, I was the one who, mm -hmm inspired others to live their best lives right yeah. through these yeah. healthy practices i i had only eaten the highest quality of organic non-processed foods yes. right like cancer was not on my agenda and now i'm here with such a 
such a brutally aggressive cancer. What did I do so wrong? Did I eat too many fruit and vegetables? Right. I really went through that process of what did I do so wrong? Because I wanted to avoid that one thing that I may have done wrong. Right. But it was really hard at first, but the, the, what I did so wrong really came to turn to what did I do so right? Right. Right. Amazing. And you know what, I think you're done more rights than any, any other one wrong. That's why you're here. Okay. Uh, You passed through the turbulent times of, and, and gone through that journey of, uh, of pain, of sorrow, of uh, distress, you know, and gone through on the other side of the, of, of your pain. Uh, uh, right now, how are you? How are you right now? Are you healthy? Well, it's a good question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So you can't go through this whole journey unscathed. And so all of these medications that mm-hmm. save my life, and I call them my sunshine vitamins, right? All of these medications that are so harsh that save my life every day, these Mm. harsh immunosuppressive medications, Mm. right? And in combination with the whole body radiation and all the chemicals of the um, chemotherapy, all of those things that have saved my life also risk my life with other complications, with secondary cancers. And my kidney has taken a big turn from all of these meds. Um, excuse me. And so I thrive, I definitely thrive, but I do. So having lost the vision in my right eye, I do. So, you know, really navigating kidney failure. I am close to needing dialysis and potentially, well, I will need a kidney transplant at some point. Um, yep. And, um, and I struggle getting these secondary cancers. And so I've had, gosh, I I would guess over 40 skin cancers taken off and they're not so much from the sun but they're okay. really from these immunosuppressive medications. I see. Um, and I've had more recently um, a more aggressive sarcoma that popped up in my shoulder. And so, I yes, I still do. I'm still in the thick of it, right? Yeah. Um, I thrive yeah. because of the gifts. I thrive breathing through the lungs of another and right. with the marrow and blood of another flowing through all parts of me. True. Gosh, I just, I truly do thrive. But yeah. on paper, on paper, when I go to meet a new physician, gosh, they have like stacks and stacks and stacks about me. And they're always like, Hmm, you don't match (laughs) what's what's in paper in person. And I love that. Right. And so there are ways to, even though I navigate all these things, I'm still so incredibly happy. Right. And there are ways to find joy in the moment of now no matter what we're navigating. And this yeah. is what I love to propel to others. True. And you know, we are so proud of you and you stay happy like this. Okay. Uh, ever, uh, ever, yeah. Ever, ever think you've gone through so much of stress. I think ever, you already know the art of coming out of this, uh, but you, you have support of everyone, even everybody, everyone in around you. And of course my support as well. Anytime, anytime. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, but you're right. The paper doesn't say what you are. You know, that's the lesson I think our viewers need to learn that the life doesn't, doesn't define you on what's going on inside your body. Ultimately it's your spirit. It's a will. It's your, it's your understanding and all this power of visualization, uh, your anger management, your power of uh, uh, art of learning, the art of attraction or law of attraction, uh, you know, do yoga meditations, all these things, it creates your body into a very high performing unit that that keeps you going, right? So the willpower is the, is the power behind you that keeps it going all the time. So please, this is, Erika is like a living example of coming through all these pains. Huh? All right. Uh, so moving into our, our next uh, uh, next topic, are you writing any, any of your memories of what's happened to you so that, you know, people who are in this distress, who are in, who are in stress, or who are going through this, not exactly from where, well, I mean, you have gone through the worst phase, I would say, worst means super worst phase, right? But somebody who's not so much in that situation, but still they want some motivation, some, some direction, you know? Are you, are, you, are you penning down your memories into this in a book form or something? Please go ahead. Yeah, I think it's really important to do so. And all of my efforts at risetoday.com are all about serving as a friend Mm -hmm. for those who feel so alone, as I did Mm -hmm. on my path of adversity, right? Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. and to share tools for others Mm -hmm. to stay the course and even to use their adversities to thrive. And so I really serve to help others cope more positively with stress 
to rise up, to bounce back and to live with more optimism, resilience, and joy today. Right. And so Mm -hmm. I have come to defy every one of the odds stacked against my success, my happiness and my survival. And I am here to empower others to do the very same. Right. Right. And so through my efforts of speaking on stages, through my efforts of coaching, through my efforts of my podcast, through my efforts of writing, um, this is how I share those tools. I had been invited to partake in this really beautiful book called The Silver Linings of Cancer and submit a chapter for that book. It's a collective book of 13 inspirational and courageous women who brought their stories forth to serve as, um, it's a really short book because oftentimes when we have cancer, it's really hard to stay focused, right? And so it's a really, really short book, um, excuse me, intended to, um, serve as a short blip of inspiration. Let's say it could be um, um, on the coffee table of a doctor's office, right? And so if you're facing a hard time, you pick up this book and you can relate to one story in there. It's a powerful book. And so, but it was really hard given the short nature of this book that it was Mm. intended to be so short for me to share the medical side of my story, let alone um, to share all of these pearls of wisdom and all of these right. awakenings that mm-hmm. I've come to learn. And so this um, um, this amazing New York publisher and her team have given me the opportunity to write my own book uh, through them. And so it's been great. I've been working on it, but I got to say slow and steady. It's like a cathartic release at the same time, right? I and see, so I'm I, kind I, of, I'm setting up this book in the way of definitely sharing my story, but right. also making it, sharing the tools that really help me thrive through it. What's the name? Rooted in? Rooted to Rise. Rooted to Rise, exactly. So we must yeah. remember, Rooted to Rise is coming soon. And of course, we will put it on Gurukul uh, uh, when, when it when it's released. We'll be very happy to have it to our viewers, you know. So that's Thank that's you. really good. Uh, I'm, I'm sure this book is going to be really inspirational for those, uh, not only those who are who are sick, terminally sick, all my, all my best wishes and prayers for them. Uh, but also people who are healthy because see how not to fall sick is a precautionary method right so being in that state of 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 mind of saying that okay i want to keep it going you need to do certain things certain things means certain practices in your life if you learn from somebody who has gone through those those practices and learned it in a hard way i would say learn that practices and do it so that you don't learn it in a hard way right so uh, going through this kind of books going through this kind of uh, practices is really important for viewers to keep themselves healthy okay so these that's are really the- easy like they, there are such easy to implement tools and habits of resilience and happiness mm-hmm. so easy to implement right if we're just aware of what to do and yeah. so that's what i love to share because the power that they bring right. these little tools right that we can put in our little resilience toolbox and pull True. it whenever we're going through a hard day these little tools can bring such power True, true. Absolutely. These two tools do bring tra- pa- power, you know? Uh, and yes, for my personal story, I, I was 210 pounds, small body, but now I'm a little less than uh, uh, 135. So think about yeah. my turbulence I've gone through, uh, uh, but that's for some other, other day. Today we're talking about the, Dr. Erica, okay? So, but no, uh, it is important, right? Like so many people say that they, they've never been through anything that I've been through, yes. right, Andy? But at the end of the day, pain is pain, hurt is hurt, and yes. grief is grief. And that yeah. that fun, fundamentally connects us all. Yeah. And so even though we all navigate different things, mm-hmm. right, we're all connected through that hurt. And these tools that I love to share can really help, whether you're struggling with a weight loss journey, whether you're yeah. struggling with divorce, whether you're struggling right. with parenting issues, whether you're struggling with career loss, right? True. Financial loss, like these tools of resilience and happiness True. do connect us all, right? True. And and that those, those basic emotions of what we go through. So even though we don't all experience the same journey, right. we're still all connected through that fundamental level. Because at the end of the day, you feel, you feel grief, you feel hurt for what you yes. go through too, right? No matter if it's different than mine or not. But True. at the end of the day, those fundamental feelings are the same. True, true, true. Absolutely yeah. true. Absolutely true. Yes. So my final words, you know, uh, uh, I would I would say mm, continue to be part of Gurukul viewers. Uh, we are bringing you uh, coaches like 
Dr. Erika, who are there for, for guide. Uh, Dr. Erika really is an exceptional coach. I want to bring this uh, to a point as well, that she was one of the uh, uh, featured person with Opera Winfrey as well. So she had met Opera Winfrey. She will see, you will see her on her website when you go to risetoday.com. So please, I encourage you to go to our website, risetoday.com. Uh, there, there you can see her podcast on, on TEDx. Uh, TEDx has given a very beautiful narration about her, her, her turbulence, her, her triumph over, over the grief, as well as uh, some motivational, motivational talk. She does regular podcasts. You can go to her YouTube channel. Uh, she does a lot of uh, YouTubing as well. Uh, and of course, you are connected on the Gurukul. So you will see her coming out here all the time. So again, this is not the first time. This is not going to be the last time for Dr. Erika. Uh, she's going to come here and then we're going to talk more about her uh, her journey in this life and how we, how they can benefit our all our viewers. So stay tuned. Uh, Erika, you would like to say something as a final parting, uh, parting words to our viewers? Please, this is your sure. time. Yeah. All the best. I'm here to support you and just strive always to take back your power that adversity comes to steal, whether it's cancer, no matter what it is, take back your power, adopt a proactive role in your own success, in your own happiness, and in your own wellness. Yeah. Thank you so much, Erika. Thank you so much. Thank you viewers again for being part of it. Bye. Ciao. All the best. Bye.